Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to tonight's live interview um, with the wonderful Anna Pollard from the Doghouse Leicester. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tammy and I am the Chief Desk here at Clan Canines. We are a premium dog adventure and boarding service up in Edinburgh. And Anna has very kindly agreed to join us tonight uh, to talk about uh, grooming for your doodle. So anyone who knows me knows that I absolutely love all the doodle breeds, so much so that I do a special doodle walk on a Monday called the Curly Crusade. And what I do find is a lot of my clients don't know initially how to look after their doodles coat and what they can do at home and what needs to be done at the salon. So Anna has very, very kindly agreed to come on and tell us all about it. So uh, without any further ado, Anna, do you want to just introduce yourself and tell us all a little bit about you? Yeah, of course. So, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I can hear myself in trouble. Oh. Um, I think. Do you want to try again? Yeah, try again. That's better. Sorry, I can like hear my voice again, and that's not something I'd like to hear. <laughs> um, so, I am Anna Pollard uh, from the Dog House Leicester. So, we are a dog grooming salon situated just outside of Leicester city um we're sort of on the countryside bit as you go out uh so we are we've been running since 2017 now so we're coming up to our third birthday um and we specialize in introducing puppies to the grooming process um so obviously we see a lot of doodles sort of they're our bread and butter or you have a lot of them in because they have so much coat maintenance so yeah um we specialize in getting them in as babies and then working with them from there Oh, perfect. So that was actually going to be my first question. So you've led very nicely on to it. <laughs> if somebody, um, because there's a lot of puppies, a lot of people have got puppies um, recently. And so if they've got a little doodle puppy, um, how, when should they first take them to the groomer and, and what should they be trying to do on that first visit, would you say? So it's very it strong groomer to groomer, um, but really you want to be doing your research before your puppies arrived. Um, so have a look at sort of the salons that are around in your area, see if they do puppy intros. Um, various groomers do various different things. So we offer a six week um, package where they'll come every week for six weeks and we'll just work on completely different things. So I would get them in as soon as they're able to go out for a walk or even sooner if you can, if you wanted to take them along and like if you've got a little papoose or something to keep them in, if you wanted to go along um if you're allowed to at the minute with various lockdown rules, but um, you can sometimes just stand in the salon for 10 minutes with your puppy, giving them loads of treats and loads of bushes and attention, and then look at booking them in um, after their second jabs for um, some sessions. And that can be anything from this first session is usually just getting your puppy used to going and being with someone that they've never met before. Um, even if it's half an hour, 45 minutes of them going to a salon, having a really fun time, um because it's going to be a massive part of a doodle's life yes. if you think of how regular that grooming is how much coat maintenance they need we need to get in there young when they're like sponges still um and expose them to all the different sights and sounds and smells so that they become confident with it because the last thing you want is a fearful dog um that has to go and be on a regular schedule and be groomed and not like it because you feel horrendous leaving your dog with a groomer. The groomer feels bad, the dog feels bad, and it's just like this recipe for disaster. So um, the, the biggest thing for me is their confidence just going into the salon. Yes. And they're doing this, dogs are wonderful at picking up on emotions. And at the minute, with there being a lockdown, dogs have got a little bit more clingy. And then the owners yeah. are coming and going, oh, I'll be back soon, I'll be back soon. And the dogs are going, oh, I really don't want to go in there today. And then as soon as their owners have like walked around the corner, the dog's like, OK, cool, I'll come in, it's fine. And they just like wander in. Um, so, yeah, I'll start them as soon as possible and as regular as you can, um, whether groomers offer so many intros for a certain price or like we offer our six-week puppy package. Um, I wouldn't go straight in for straight in for the groom straight away necessarily. I'd give them a little time to build up to it. Yeah. I think that that's amazing advice and you hear that a lot. I think um, puppy owners hear a lot about um, taking the puppy to the vet and, and really making that a great experience and people don't necessarily think about that for the groomers. But yeah, your your puppy, I mean, how often 
would you say a doodle needs grooming? Uh, professional um, grooms? So, once their adult coat comes through, you sort of look in mm, six, seven months to about a year, their coat will start to develop um, and you'll you lose their puppy fluff and they'll start to get their coarse adult coat through. Um, and once they're in adult stage, it needs to be every depends on what style you want to be fair yeah. so you'll know from looking at them you can get doodles that are quite wiry that have um like labradoodles some of them look just like labs but have got a little bit more hair um and then on the other hand you have some cockapoos or and go, golden doodles that are sort of the three-quarter poodle that have really really tight ringletty curls um so for your tight ringletty curls you need to be sort of every four to six weeks yeah. um for the more of a wave um you're looking at perhaps six to eight but again it completely depends on how much you can do at home mm -hmm. your dog's coat your lifestyle the style that you want so sort of if you want in the more poodle styles um and like big continental trims um which can look awesome on a dude but i know not many trainers <laughs> like it but groomers love doing it um or whether you just have it all off because some groomers some owners are like i can't handle the after the muddy walks going back inside can't okay. handle it so just take it all nice and short because it's just so much easier maintenance yeah. um but as a rule it needs to be regular um yeah it just so makes that, everyone's life easier yeah and that that really is regular so you know like what we were just saying about making it a really good experience for your puppy because if they're going to be going to the groomers every month or month and a half you know you really want them to be loving it and enjoying it and having a great time um so yeah, yeah and that's really really you get people it's quite exciting isn't it and you uh -huh. like your training classes you want to get them used to the vets that sometimes grooming gets bumped a little bit too far down the list and then you're yeah. like oh my god my puppy's six months old and it's never been groomed um <laughs> and when you get to that stage it can be a little bit chaotic so if you have gone over the puppy stage and you're mm -hmm. now getting towards the adolescent stage and your dog hasn't been to the groomer, I would still recommend putting in a couple of sort of desensitisation visits yeah. rather than saying, oh, it's gone too far and it, it needs to experience everything at once because yeah. that is where the coat is changing, the hormones are raging and they've never experienced it before. It can just um, do more harm than good. So I would yeah. get them in early and get them used to it. Oh, fantastic advice. Sorry, I'm just bringing up this to see if anyone's asking any questions. I'm trying to do both at once. Um, and my, my technical skills are not fantastic. So, just bear with me. <laughs> so my next question, um, which I think you kind of almost alluded to in your answer there, is making life easier for your groomer and for yourself. So what can doodle owners do at home um, to keep their, their coats in a good condition and to make it easier and and less stressful for their their pup when they do go to the groomer. Yeah, so regular maintenance. Um, so things like brushing your puppy out regularly at home or your your dog, depending on what age we're, we're talking about. Yeah. Um, get them into a routine to brush them at home as well. So having um a set area where you will brush them out all the time can really help. Um, if you think about how the grooming salon set up, like a dog will nine times out of the ten nine times out of ten be groomed on a grooming table mm -hmm. so trying to replicate that at home so if you have um like a worktop or something up mm -hmm. a little bit higher where they can differentiate that oh we're not down on the floor playing and having fun and games mm -hmm. and eating or treats or whatever else That's but when i go up on this surface i have to be able to perhaps be a bit stiller be a bit calmer and mm -hmm. accept being brushed and it's not necessarily a case of when you're at home with your dog brushing them like top to tail every time, it might be that you've got five minutes and you can brush out a leg. And then another mm -hmm. night you can brush out another leg. Um, but the more regularly you can do it at home with your puppy and get them into the routine, um, it will really help to, it will benefit them in the long run because they will have less knots in their coat. And then it means that they're used to it when they go to the groomer. Mm -hmm. um, if you're having a dog that you perhaps don't maintain at home and then it's going to the groomers and having to have a bit of dematting or knots taken out, it can then become an uncomfortable experience for them. Um, and then, again, it's not just looking about the dog in the salon that's being groomed at the time. It's also everything else in your dog's day that can affect it. Um, from so Some dogs we have that come to us don't like travelling in cars. So you're all, 
already sort of spiking their arousal levels by putting them in a car then if they don't like the groomers as well it's uh, uh, it can kind of escalate quite quickly so it's looking at the whole um of their day of their week uh, and again this is probably going off on a bit of a tangent but if you've got a reactive dog to noise um so like fireworks and all of that it's worth looking at your grooms around bonfire night around diwali around big celebrations uh, like yeah. new year and stuff mm-hmm. and working it into your dog's schedule so if you know that they're really reactive to it give them a couple of weeks either side um i know that like my little patterdale although he's not a doodle um he's very reactive to to different noises so it's just taking into consideration what can affect them um because grooming can be a long job for dogs i mean on average a groom is like two hours and that's like quite a long time out of the day yeah so it takes about two hours two two and a half hours to do a cockapoo anything bigger than a cockapoo sort of two and a half to three hours um depending on how many people are in the salon again we there's my business partner and i say so for some bigger dogs we can work two of us to one dog for a little bit of extra handling if we need to so uh, oh no option. that's that, i think that's really good advice especially for the people watching in edinburgh tonight because um obviously this year with, with COVID has been different but we go through an entire month of fireworks usually in August with the festival and the and the tattoo so um, planning that in and try to avoid that is really really good good advice. Um, that's, yeah that's and really it's like we do have people to us that um, do actually have some karma and um, so they'll either take a natural supplement or something from the vet that they'll have like a few days running up um, yeah. And I think that's always something to consider if you do have a dog that's slightly more reactive. Uh, I mean, yeah. there's some really good natural remedies out mm-hmm. there as well, but there is some stronger stuff from vets. So yeah. don't be afraid to ask for that, I would almost say, because you're helping yeah. your dog out as well. Yeah. yeah. So it's important to yeah. consider. Yeah, fantastic advice. And Anna Louise has just asked a question, which is perfect because that was my next question. So thank you very much, Anna. Mm-hmm. Anna's asking, what brushes and combs would you recommend owners use at home? Uh, particularly for multi-gen doodles. For what dogs, sorry? Uh, multi-gen doodles. Oh, okay, yeah. So here I have two I made earlier. So these mm-hmm. are Simpsons slicker brushes. Um, slicker brushes. Yeah, so a slicker brush. These are flexible slicker brushes because they have that bit of give in the head. Mm-hmm. Um so Simpsons Grooming Supplies do really good ones. They do a blue and a purple, which are, the blue ones are specifically for doodles. Um, the purple ones we use for doodles that have perhaps got a shorter coat um, and we use those all the time, oh, all the time on doodles before the blue one came out. Um, so a Flexi Slicker has wire teeth on either side. Mm-hmm. It has that bit of give in the head so that it takes the pressure um, off of your wrist and off the dog's coat. Some of the rigid ones, if you don't use them correctly, can perhaps cause a bit of brush burn and aren't very ergonomically designed. Um, for, for home grooming, you'll be okay with a, with a set slicker as long as you don't go too hard on the skin. Um, but for salons, again, the Flexi Slicker just gives you a little bit of um, give on your wrist. So when you're using them, I'm probably gonna go off on a tangent now, um, but when you're using them, Always use the flat face, the whole of the flat face. Don't like dig in with a tip or put too much pressure on because if you're doing that, you're then um, the pressure isn't even throughout throughout the brush and you can dig in and cause brush burn on your dog. Mm -hmm. Um, So always make sure that the skin stays like sort of a nice, well, I would say nice pinky colour. But it depends if they've got black bits on their skin. Some dogs do, especially um, the doodles that have got sort of darker patches and lighter patches that their skin will change colour. But as long as their skin isn't going speckly and red um, and just try and maintain the same pressure mm-hmm. and then you're not damaging your brush and you're dam- not damaging your dog's skin either. So I would use a flexi slicker always. I would avoid mm-hmm. things like like tangle teasers. I don't know if I'm allowed to say brands, <laughs> but I just <laughs> did. I would avoid things like that because you're only brushing the top of the dog's coat. Um, mm-hmm. It's really important that you make sure you're getting down t- from the root to the tip of your dog's coat um, to ensure there's no knots because if you're just brushing the top, it will look lovely and fluffy, but when you get under there, that's when the mats can get in. Right. So mm-hmm. after you've gone over your brush, in fact, I'll go through the technique as well in a second. After you've gone over with your brush, go over with the comb 
so can you see that poem has got sort of wider yeah. teeth and narrow teeth um i would go over with the wider teeth first and then you can go over with the narrow teeth as well and the narrow teeth are really good for um sort of between eyes and paws and um, paws are really important to pay attention to because doodles get knots in between their toes on the regular that is a place that we get lots of knots on doodles yeah. um and also there will be grass seeds hiding underneath knots on doodles um yeah. same with spangles as well to be fair um you get a lot of knots in between toes and ears um and once the grass seed goes in it can cause quite a lot of damage yeah um, so it's just something to be aware of and obviously the more you're brushing your dog at home the more you will pick up on grass seeds on fleas on ticks um it's amazing what you find in the doodles coats you can find yeah. glitter we found rice and <laughs> um, rice krispies we found all sorts and <laughs> um, so yeah the more you brush the more you find but oh, when wow. you're using a slicker brush what i would do is sort of what you call section or line brushing so mm -hmm. if you made a parting in the hair so if you, we always tend to start from the feet so i would push up so much hair make a line in the hair and then brush everything below the line with your brush and your comb and then move mm -hmm. up to the next section um it helps to obviously keep some method to where you're working so you know where you've been and also if you try and use the same routine on your dog again it gets them used to it but also means that you can get root to tip um on each section so you're not missing mm -hmm. anything and then yeah. when you're brushing um try and use your handle as an arrow so you're not using your brush across like that because um, it will damage your pins. So always use it in the direction that your wrist is going. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then try and use, honestly, it's really hard trying to explain what you do every day, isn't it? Yeah. I'm like, I can't quite get my words out. And then I always use it, so flat face down. So I'd put it on the hair, take it down, and then take it off. So you're like in a cyclical motion. Um, mm -hmm. And then, like, not too hard either. If you use this liquor brush on your own skin, um, first you'll see the pressure that you're using and it doesn't hurt at all and it won't, won't damage your dog um, if you do come across a knot I would always try and tease it apart with your fingers first um, so tease it apart with your fingers give it a brush give it a comb through again because um, obviously if you're going straight onto a knot with a metal comb um, yeah. they will pull away they will squeak and yeah. um, they can yeah. be a little bit dramatic at the time can doodles as much as we love them they can be slightly dramatic um, oh. So yeah, as long as you're picking them apart with your finger, and anything you can pick apart with your finger um, should brush out. You tend to find, sorry if I'm rambling now. <laughs> no, no, I think this is all really good. Um, yeah. So you might find sort of mats behind ears tends to be quite a common place for mats mm -hmm. um, around where any collar or harness is. Yeah. Um, is you need to pay particular attention to brushing um, because of because it's causing a friction um it can then cause a mat and again yeah. if you're if you put a coat on your doodle in the winter or jumpers or anything anything that basically that surface covers is yeah. has the potential to become knotty um mm -hmm. bottoms and tails again as well tend to be quite knotty quite quickly um and don't be afraid to say to your groomer like i think i think i need my dog taken short and i know yeah. people don't like to do it but it's sometimes it's the best thing to do um mm -hmm. and owners feel awful when they have to have their dogs taken short but your dog feels so much more comfortable um yeah. rather than having to be dematted and also i don't think i know one doodle in my life that's never had to go short yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of it's like a rite of passage <laughs> yeah i think every single one that i walk at some point has had the the sheer um, yeah and like you can it. usually keep faces um as long as they're not too matted faces don't tend to get too bad um uh -huh. but yeah sometimes if 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 it's going to be painful or there's so much matting it's just easier to take it all all off that's perfect i've just seen a little question here from jacqueline um i think you might have almost kind of answered it but we'll go over it anyway um so she has a golden doodle with sheep like non-shedding coat the problem she has is um when she can't get him clipped uh, the problem I have when I can't get them clipped is lots of tiny knots that I can't get rid of no matter how often I groom. Is there any way I can prevent these knots? We are currently shielding, so can't get to the groomer. Would that be okay. the, like, uh, the fingers? Or? If you're shielding, 
can hear myself again, Ooh. sorry. Um, if you're shielding, you can't get to the groomer, I would obviously brush, brush, brush as much as you can. Try and take them apart with your fingers. Um, be prepared that when you can go back to your groomers, the chances are it will be short. Um, mm -hmm. But your dog will be really grateful after a long lockdown um, to be taken short. And also it might be worth looking at sort of a conditioning spray or a detangling spray. Um, there's some really good ones on the market. There are some completely natural ones. Um, mm. So the Herbal Pet Company do a daily doodle spray. Herbal Dog, is that the Herbal Dog Company? I love them, yeah. Mm. I, I recommend yeah. their products to all my clients. Yeah, they're brilliant. Yeah. So they do a daily doodle spray, which when I first sprayed it, I was like, oh, it's made, it, it almost made like bubbles in the coat. And I was like, oh my goodness, I don't know if this is right. And then after brushing it out, like I use it on my shepherds. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, look out of them um but it's really good and um it does leave the coat really um really nice afterwards so it it comes out as quite a jet so it wets it quite a lot but um what i'll do is i'd spray a conditioning spray on leave it for five minutes to soak in and then give it a brush out so there's a herbal dog company that do the daily doodle spray there is um I'm trying to think of the other one that i just thought of marshmallow so Marshmallow do a spray as well, which again comes out like a bit of a jet. So let it soak in and then brush over. That's a natural one as well, I believe. And it smells like marshmallows. It smells amazing. Um, the one that we use in the salon, which is a little bit heavier duty, is Banish. Um, and that's by Simpsons. I don't think that's completely all natural. Um, but it's worth having an investigate because we use that in the salon and it's, it's really, really good. And um, they also do a conditioner that comes with that as well. Um, mm. which if you're bathing at home over lockdown would, would probably be beneficial too. Um, and there's also the Melanie Newman. There's loads of ranges that do conditioning space, but Melanie Newman is also good and that's also natural too. Oh, so fair, there's loads but, out there. But yeah. definitely we invest in a decent um, conditioning spray. Yeah, perfect. Hopefully that answers your question, Jacqueline. Um, and Sally, I, I swear people just know what questions I'm going to ask. I have my questions written down and people are asking them in exactly the right order that I had. So my next question was going to be about dogs' ears and keeping them clean. And Sally Hartley has just asked, can you give any advice or tips for managing a waxy doodle ear? So it is a really difficult because um, with them being part poodle, their ears can be plucked. Not all salons offer that, um, and it's a bit. It, we're recommended that we don't offer it as such because there can be so much hiding underneath plucked ears that it can um, it can be hiding sort of hidden ear infections and stuff. And obviously, then that can come back on the groomer. So, um, personally, in our salon, salon, we don't offer ear plucking, but definitely in terms of ear cleaning, there are some good cleaners too so the herbal dog company again um do a really nice ear cleaner which i use on my german shepherds because obviously they have big sticky up ears um yeah. and what i just do with that is put it onto um just onto a cotton pad not onto a cotton bud i would never obviously put cotton bud down your dog's ears mm -hmm. and not necessarily the cotton balls because they can be quite fibrous but mm -hmm. like the makeup remover pads um yeah i would just put it put wet, wet one of those um, and give it a wipe around their ear um, and that should take off a lot of the excess wax if you're finding that there is loads and loads of wax and it is quite smelly it could be an indication of perhaps an infection in there so it'd be worth getting checked at the vets um obviously groomers aren't vets but we can usually advise if there's something a little bit more than yeah. um just wax going on but again mm -hmm. a lot of it can be altered um by diets um, so you tend to find that sometimes like excess wax, tear staining, poor licking can be an indication of maybe a food allergy or sort of an environmental allergy. Oh, fab. And that, I think that's where it's probably really good to have a great relationship with your groomer because they will be able to notice things like that and advise you to to maybe go and speak to your vet. So, yeah, that's... Um, yeah, like, if you think, we, we spend like a couple of hours with your dogs and we, we've got our hands all over your dogs. Like we yeah. check teeth, we check ears, we check eyes and everything. Um, and we will usually say like, if there's even a walk come up or a lump um, uh -huh. or ears are looking a little bit sore, it's... Um, it's always worth pointing you in the right direction. 
I mean, we will normally say perhaps go and chat to your vet, and if they've been to the vet a few times, um, then it's worth like keep pursuing it. If you've got a consistent yeah. problem, with, like a coat problem that your groomer isn't able to offer advice on, then I would definitely keep pushing for an answer, um, yeah. because it can be quick to. Oh, it's worth looking at other things as well that affect sort of their skin and coat. So like diet, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. plugins in the house like all things like that candles there can be so much that can affect it that yeah. don't, it don't always necessarily stick with one answer yeah actually interesting and in terms of keeping their ears clean how regularly would you be advising owners to do that to sort of clean their doodles ears well it oh. depends really um it depends on sort of your dog's lifestyle if they're big ear itches um like my patterdale i never ever have to clean his ears um one of my shepherds always gets his cleaned and the other one she gets them done sort of every now and then where i'm like they're a bit grubby um but if they're going to the groomers anyway obviously their ears will get washed in the bath um so it it can just be like a maintenance thing as and when i wouldn't keep going at them like sort of daily um i would say no more than once a week really just because Mm -hmm. you don't want to be upsetting sort of the balances in there yeah, no, that makes total sense. Um, uh, ah, now, ch- that, <laughs> that's another question that I was going to ask. <laughs> so uh, Lynn Stanworth is saying she doesn't have a doodle, um, but she has, I do know Lynn actually, and she's got a husky, and she says he has um, the tear stains uh, on his eyes, on his face, and how, how can you, well, she's asking how can you get rid of them, but do you have any tips on preventing them in the first place and then, you know how to get rid of them if if your dog does have them yeah i mean um, i have a white mask on his face um and because you tend to notice the tear staining more on white faced dogs um so like sort of the apricot doodles uh bichons yeah. maltese that sort of thing um again it's hard to say specifically one thing that causes it um a lot of it is impurities sort of in the diet that are coming out so a lot of people recommend sort of filtered water um a raw diet sort of that sort of thing again plugins around the house can affect it um candles, is that do you mean like air freshener um, plugins yeah like air freshener plugins um if you've got a dog that's really itchy and you can't like it seems allergy type itching mm-hmm. um then i would take out all your plugins and look at your household cleaners as well. So my other half hates it because I'm like, you can't use that. You can't use that. It's not natural. Not having that. And he's like, oh for God's sake. Um, but there are some really good sort of cleaners out there that we use in the salon. So we use a lot from the animal health company. Right. Um, and you can find them online. And they do like a, I think it's called BioSafe Cleaner. Um, so we use all of their sort of safe cleaners, which would be worth looking at around the house as well particularly at the minute, obviously, with all the extra cleaning that people are doing. Um, Uh We just need to make sure they're safe to use around animals. Same with essential oils as well. Um, Using essential oils around dogs, they can react completely different to to them, to (laughs) humans, because they have such an incredible sense of smell. Um, And obviously, an essential oil is, like, really, really concentrated. So whatever that plant has been treated with, if it's not necessarily a, a full supply chain of organicness, um, mm-hmm. You could also be like, there's other stuff in there that's been concentrated, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not necessarily pure oil. Um, so yeah, it's it's a bit of a minefield when you get going, especially if you've got a dog who does have allergies. Yeah. Um, but I would just take everything out to as natural as possible. Um, oh. I mean, you can get um, face scrubs and stuff, so a lot of salons offer facials where you can sort of, if you're trying to lessen them rather than... Mm-hmm. Um, prevent them you can uh-huh. sort of get a face scrub um there can be sort of charcoal scrubs for dogs faces um that can help and over time sort of if you can if you do the facials and stuff you kind of need to be doing the other bits to mm-hmm. prevent it as well, so that eventually it will grow out obviously um when your dog's eyes are being trimmed we can trim out as much of the staining as we can um but if you're not doing the preventative stuff yeah it can still come out yeah 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 and like eye bogies as well which you don't tend to see quite as much on doodles but with the flatter face you do um if they're getting a lot of eye bogies as well rather than trying to pick them off when they're dry it's worth using like a really soft 
like children's toothbrush or a cotton pad and really damp them down first and then they should come away much easier because oh, um, um, it can be a little bit sore to take off sometimes. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, there's a question here from Elaine. Um, I'm not sure if, can you see these questions? I'm reading them out because I'm not sure if you can see them for you. Okay, yeah, so yeah, it's fine. I'll read it, I'll read it out. I just don't want you to read it if you want. You can read it. Um, Elaine says, what is the best way to brush a golden doodle's face? Um, her dog is okay being brushed everywhere else, but doesn't like around his mouth getting brushed. Is there any tips or advice? Okay, I would go for a smaller brush for starters, um, just because obviously um, having a big brush yeah. waving around the face, they can be a little bit like, oh, what's that? Um, I would really start with desensitising them with food. So um depends what your dog is motivated by. So mine will do pretty much anything for Primula cheese um, or like a sausage or doggy-friendly peanut butter. Um, I would start with like, sticking a bit on your finger, see if they'll lick it, and then just start with your brush sort of here, or a hand, or mm -hmm. even like a wooden spoon, like, and the closer you can get to them with it, um, mm -hmm. I'll just do like a couple of minutes, and as soon as the peanut butter's gone off your finger, stop, give them a love, um, and then start it again. It can be a bit of a lengthy process, but even if you you can just get your hands like touching around there, um, mm -hmm. rather than using like a brush with wire pins or, any scissors like so we recommend obviously you doing this at home anyway um yeah. if you can get sort of the end of a spoon around their face and stuff it will, it will give them a good introduction in to be able to then introduce a brush mm -hmm. um and again when you're holding them under their like to to groom their face so a groomer will hold under their chin um and mm -hmm. that's something you start from sort of them being tiny as well at home yeah. um sort of just getting them used to that handling and Obviously, don't take a small bit, but try and take sort of a bigger bit so it's a bit more gentle. And just yeah. hold it for a second, tell them they're amazing and wonderful and give them a treat. <laughs> um, yeah. And then eventually you'll get there with them because it can be a bit of a, a weird sensation for them because they're not yeah. used to sitting still. Yeah, yeah, fantastic advice. Um, Sally has a question. I don't know whether you would know this. I don't know if this is more a vet or a groomer question, but I'll ask you in case you know. Um, so Sally cleans her doodle's teeth every day. Um, do you have any other advice? There's always a bit of staining and the vet says it's a poodle thing. Um, is there anything we can do? He does love to munch on carrots. Oh, he helps the boy. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a both really because um, like we offer a teeth cleaning service, which is with an ultrasonic toothbrush, um, which means that your dog doesn't have to go under uh, anaesthetic, which they would do at the vet's. Once a dog has been under anaesthetic and had their vet, their teeth cleaned at the vets, um, the plaque tends to return a little bit quicker. Um, okay. There's different toothpaste. So like if you use an enzymatic toothpaste, um, it will work with the saliva in your dog's mouth to hopefully help reduce a little bit of um, buildup. And then there's supplements sort of like, I think there's an Orozyme gel that Emmy Pet do, but there's also like plaque off, um, perfect pegs, um, various different supplements that you can add to their food again it could be more of a pre preventative thing mm -hmm. rather than being able to take it off um but a lot of groomers do now offer sort of a teeth cleaning option so it's worth that's fantastic look. that's fun. i didn't actually know that so that's fantastic really yeah. good advice <laughs> Really good advice. Um, so I had one more question that I wanted to ask you that was a bit kind of seasonal because we are coming to winter. <laughs> I think some people are almost in winter already. Mm -hmm. And I know from, from having been a dog walker quite a few years now, it just becomes like mud season. And most my doodles have little equi fleeces and things, but you, dogs are having to get washed a lot more, dried a lot more. Um, have you got any sort of tips or advice for owners in terms of how often they should be cleaning their dog, how to dry them, um, and how to just try to protect their coat in, in, in winter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a difficult time. I, I had a dog in this morning and he was ditched, and his mum was like, he's just been for a great walk. And I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> he's no longer white. Um, so, yes, what I would do is after any walk, obviously, rinse your dog off. Um, it is a lengthy process, but it's got to be done. <laughs> Um, so rinse your dog off. If you want to use a shampoo, um, I would use a dog shampoo. Um, don't be tempted to use sort of Johnson's baby shampoo or fairy liquid or anything like that. 
we need to be going for a dog shampoo because dogs have a different pH level um, to humans. So dog shampoo is specifically designed for them. If you're washing them off regularly, I would use a natural high quality shampoo. Um, so in the salon, we sort of use Hound, we use Poor Natural, um, we've used Millie's before. Like there's loads of loads of really, like Melanie yeah. Newman as well. There's loads of really good high quality natural shampoos now. Um, you kind of spoil for choice on the market because yeah. they are really good. Um, and I would be using that shampoo if you needed to shampoo them. If not, just a rinse off would be fine. Make sure you're brushing through thoroughly. So you might want to apply a bit of a conditioning spray um, or a detangling spray, and then brush through again with your slicker brush. Comb through with your comb. Um, don't rub the coat, so don't rub with a towel because that will mm -hmm. cause friction. If you need to take the excess water off, um, you can get sort of those microfiber super absorbent towels, um, mm -hmm. and I would use those. So I would like sort of squeeze, not squeeze, like pat, maybe <laughs> that's a better word than squeeze. <laughs> uh, I would pat it dry and then again brush through. Um, oh. If you have got time to dry with a hairdryer and your dog will tolerate it, then go for it. Um, because the, the drier you can get it, obviously it'll take the moisture away from the skin. Yeah. Um, if you have got big knots in between toes, then there's no harm in asking your groomer to snip those out. Um, and again, another thing we do for maintaining coats in the winter is we tend to have a lot of dogs in just for a bath and a brush out. Um, mm -hmm. So literally they'll just have sort of an hour's appointment where they'll have be washed and dried. Um, because it helps with coat maintenance in between and then we can keep an eye on sort of knots in between toes um mm -hmm. but yeah avoid rubbing as much as you can yeah um and make sure if you are washing them with shampoo that you're getting all the shampoo out until it's like a bit with your own hair until it sort of squeaks yeah. when you when you can feel that because if you're not getting the shampoo out you'll then get a dog licking their paws and that's where you get a lot of the paw staining coming from yeah that's really good. I actually use with my dogs. I've got some of those microfiber um, drying robes, so and they're yeah. not too tight yeah. on them, so they're great. So when they're going in the van, they get they get that over them, and that, that yeah. that's um, and and they're quite. There's quite a lot of companies doing those now, um, and that, that's quite a good way to not. Because I'm always really conscious that I don't want to to really rub their rub their feet <laughs> with the towel, but um, there is some proper little mud magnets in the clan. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, I bet. I mean, yeah. there is those, like, you can get those little portable showers as well. Now, yeah, can't you have one? Is it good? I'm really I have, to get yes, one. I have a, a hose lock porta shower in the van and I have a herbal dog company shampoo for uh, for the proper mud magnets. So, yeah, we, uh, we I try my best. <laughs> yeah, I would um, really say as well not to let your dog sort of, um, but it's really hard to do because it's really funny but when you get them out of the bath don't let them hair around and like rub themselves on everything yeah. um because again you're helping them to get not so um dry them off as much as you can then take if you do it bathing them properly at home take them to your designated grooming area give them a brush through give them a dry and always try and make sure that that they're they're getting as dry as quickly as they can and that you're using your brush with your hair dryer mm -hmm. and it should help to avoid any knots Really good advice. And for, for I guess for people watching who have just got little puppies, getting getting your dog used to the hair dryer and things like that is it, you're giving yourself a great head start, especially if you're if your puppy's under twelve weeks, um, that are still at that stage where they're taking everything in and you know and and introducing them to to a hair dryer in in a good way at a very young age is going to be it's going to do you a lot of good I think over the dog's life. Yeah. So there's um always trying to like start off with space like whenever you're mm -hmm. introducing them to something new make sure that the hair dryer is like the other side of the room whilst they're doing something really fun um yeah. same with like the hoover and everything really isn't it but yeah. yeah um and then you can work towards them like closer and closer there is yeah. a really good app, um called... oh, is it the soundproof soundproof puppy yeah. app yes amy it's smith's app. i'm thinking it's amy smith's app i don't know what it is yeah um yeah. she has a grooming sound section on there i'm sure she does which has uh, we'll have like clipper sounds and everything else. Um, yeah. There are you can get free clipper sound apps, but they're, they're they come with loads of adverts. So um, Amy's app isn't much money, and it's definitely worth yeah. it. And I, would say. I, I was literally looking at it the other day because I'm getting a little puppy soon, so I was having a wee look at yeah. it, and I think it's only. I think it's like a three pound or something like that. So it's definitely it's not a lot of money, and I think it's really good. So that was the soundproof 
Poppy app, it's called, and I think you can get that on Android and on iPhone, actually. Yeah. Um, it looks like we have got one more question. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much, Anna. You've just been amazing. So Donna is asking, Donna Murray, um, around the bottom, so grooming again, around the bottom area, and yes, I can. I know from experience with some of the doodles I walk, that can get particularly tuggy. Um, is there any sort of tips um, out with what you've sort of already said for that area? Um, so when you are brushing them, I would um, t try and use your arm to help keep, because they will. You'll try and brush the doodles bottom, and they'll sit down automatically, and they'll look at you and you'll be like, "Yeah, I'll do that now." Um, but if you try and encourage them to stand up, you can perhaps use your arm to support underneath them. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, be careful with their tail because um, it is like an extension of their spine. And um, so, just be careful what direction you're moving that in. But I would usually put my see there, put my arm mm -hmm. under, like under them, and then sort of take their tail from this side, and then you can sort of brush around there. Um, tend to find that doodles get a lot. Of Cling ons as well, <laughs> um, just because of how they get. So, ask, don't be afraid to ask your groomer to take it short around there. Um, yeah. You can't tell, like, you'll probably, you probably see more dogs' bombs than anything as they're running off into yeah. the distance. Um, yeah. try, trying to keep it as clean as possible is definitely, uh -huh. especially if they sleep on your bed, mm -hmm. keep it as clean as you can. Yeah. <laughs> um, Fab, I've just got one more question that I did actually want to ask you about, and then if no one has any other questions, we will we'll let you go. Um, and it was really about the the claws um, and what what people can do at home to sort of help, you know. Especially, I think during lockdown, when people you know couldn't get to the groomers, and and hopefully we're not going to go back into lockdown. But if that situation happens, what can people do to sort of keep their dogs' claws um, trimmed at home without causing sort of damage or pain? Yeah, it's it's difficult. Dogs have um, clear nails or black nails. Obviously, clear nails are much easier to see um, because you have sort of the pink quick, um, and then sort of you can see the nail. Um, so I would have a good look at your dog's nails because it is quite fascinating. So the quick is sort of um, the blood vessel that covers the nerve, and um, so it's all sort of. And if you catch that, it is sore for them and it does bleed yeah. and you will panic. Um, so I would, it's a bit of a myth that if you walk dogs a lot on roads that it wears them down. It would have like a small impact, but I don't think mm. it would ever, unless they were running on road a lot, it would never really yeah. make a massive impact. And mm. their feet can be at different angles. So Prim, my youngest shepherd, her, she kind of stands like that. So her nails go out. They don't naturally yeah. touch the floor, whereas Cody is more upright, so his do. Um, but if you are brave enough to, to have a go at home, then I'll just take off the tiniest, tiniest bits um, mm -hmm. at a time and just see. And you, you'll normally feel before putting pressure on, um, if your dog starts pulling away before you put, as you're starting to put pressure on, that you're perhaps in a bit of a sensitive area. Mm -hmm. um, I've not got my clippers with me, but we used to tend to use um, the ones that look like pliers rather yeah, yeah. than the clippers that are like a guillotine. We used to use a guillotine ones for like my rabbits and guinea pigs when I was little. Yeah. Um, but I'll try and avoid those because they can kind of squish the nail. Um, yeah. I would always go for the more guillotine one because it is oh. um, it is quicker. Or you can get little grinders. Um, I, think I, they do I was going to ask actually. you about those. They, yeah, they seem to look, from what you see, whether it's right or not, but they seem to look a bit less. Sort of. Yeah, and you can sort of put the dog's nail into it and just take off small amounts, and it seems uh -huh. to have quite a good guard on it. But it's not one I've used personally. I've got like a big Dremel yeah. that I do my patterdales with. Um, but just be aware, obviously, if you're grinding it, just take it off quite quickly. Um, yeah. They tend to be quieter than clippers. It just depends what your dog dog tolerates, and uh -huh. always try and support the nail if you're clipping or if you're grinding. Um, because obviously it's much their toe, and the steadier you keep their whole toe when you're clipping a nail, um, it stops the vibration traveling and it's just a bit nicer for them. Um, again, you can either clip out to the front or you can clip sort of underneath, like you would if you were picking a horse's hoof up. Yeah. Um, if you don't feel confident doing it though, I would definitely say don't um, go to the groomers first. If the groomer can't do it, then try the vets. Um, yeah. We tend to say if a dog's been to a vet's and has to be muzzled, etc., to have their nails done at the vet's, that um, we as a groomer perhaps wouldn't take that dog on. But each groomer works differently. Um, 
again muzzle training is a really great thing for a dog um i try yeah. with my shepherds but if you've got a dog that is nervous of the vets or the groomers then mm-hmm. trying to make them feel comfortable in every sort of aid is mm-hmm. isn't the best way yeah yeah really good advice well Anna thank you so so much everybody's sort of just saying thank you at the moment in the comments and (laughs) and really enjoyed it and I I appreciate you giving up so much of your time Uh, we have been going for 45 minutes (laughs) so um, (laughs) it does isn't it and it's been really really informative and I hope that people have, have got a lot out of it I certainly have and yeah, it's been amazing. And and what we're actually going to do before I forget is um, Anna wrote a fantastic ebook during lockdown called Corona Corona Notes Corona for Notes Curly Coats. Curly Coats. I love that. I love that. And um, so if anybody would like a copy of that, if you send a private message to the Clan Canines Facebook page with your email address, I will email you a copy over. Um, and it really is fantastic i had a look over it um the other day and it's brilliant so if anyone wants a copy of that just let us know um and yeah thank you very much anna um i really really appreciate thank you for inviting (laughs) me along it's been nice to chat to you oh you too excellent thank you so much and thanks everyone who's joined (laughs) us and we'll see you all again soon Bye. Bye. bye